Cordobois, EPGD Attorneys at Law. We're gonna do a five minute with Eric to put this on YouTube and then we'll break it up into some one minutes so we can do it on the shorter uh, social media. So here's what I wanna talk about, trademarks. Um, now, if you go back in time and you look at my old videos, I've talked about this a lot and there's a very easy reason. It's because it's one of my favorite areas, okay? So let's start with the basics. What is a trademark, right? So in intellectual property, we got four different kinds. We got patents, those are inventions. We got copyright, that's content. We got trademarks, that's your branding. And then we've got um, secrets, which are secrets. Um, and these are the four types of intellectual property we can protect. So trademarks specifically is gonna be the name of the product or good you're selling, um, the good or service. It's gonna be your slogan. It's whatever you're using to brand that product. So for example, Nike, um, they make athletic shoes, or at least they used to. They probably make a lot of other stuff now. So then you got the swoosh, which was their logo, which they identified as their logo. Um, and then you've got just do it, right? Which was one of their taglines. Um, and so just to break it down, I like to say there's three types of trademarks uh, in big, big categories. So the first type are what we call common law trademarks. So common law trademark, all it means is that you are the first person selling a particular good or service using that branding. Okay, um, so for example, if I'm the first EPGD law firm, um, then I get what's called common law rights. Now common law, what that means is it comes from the English law that we inherited, and you don't have to register anywhere. You don't have to go to the government, you don't have to pay a fee, you get it. Um, now, common law has restrictions, meaning that in order to enforce my common law rights, I would have to sue someone in state court generally, um, and then I would have to uh, prove my case, prove that I'm first, prove that I am in a particular market, and prove my good or service, um, and of course, I'm proving it against somebody else. So I gotta prove that they're second, I gotta prove that they're also in my market, and I gotta prove that they're also in our um, in selling the same or similar good or service. Now, the real thing is that there's no attorney's fees. Okay, let me let that sink in. There's no attorney's fees. So the second way, the, the second type of trademark is called a state trademark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that good or service, the branding, the logo, and I'm gonna register it in my state. And that should give me statewide protection. Now I keep mentioning good or service, so it's by category. Um, now there are a couple different lists. The most famous is called the Nice Agreement. It's a category that was agreed to in the south of France. It's a treaty. Uh, most civilized countries are signed up to it. And there's a list of 45. If you ever wanna Google it, go for it. I recommend you use the one from the USPTO website instead of the WIPO website. Uh, anyways, it's just easy to read. You can browse through it. And believe it or not, they've somehow categorized all 45, I'm sorry, all activities of human commerce into this list of 45. It's crazy. There's a couple catch-alls, like category 35 is like business services, which covers a lot. Um, some are very narrow. 45 is legal services, um, just for example. So um, you can register it in your state. Now, the question is, well, what if I'm selling online and there's somebody in the next state over, right? I'm in Florida, what if somebody's in Georgia? Well, technically you would not have uh, rights against them, not under the state. You might have rights against them under the common law, which then leads into the third category, and that is federal. So federal is nationwide, right? So I'm gonna register it at the USPTO, that's the United States Patent and Trademark Office, that's up in Washington, D.C., it's actually in Alexandria, Virginia, and you, once it gets approved, you get nationwide rights, it's got your date of first use right there. Um, now, people ask, well, what if somebody else started before me, but I register second? Well, that's where things get complicated, right? Because technically, they beat you to the punch, but you beat them to the registration. So maybe you get nationwide rights, but they still get rights in their little market where they are because they were first, and so you can't shut them down. Um, that's obviously where things get complicated. So um, when we're registering, and that's what we always recommend at the federal level, we're gonna look at, are you gonna register the name or a logo, which can include words, but you know that's the two different types. We got words or designs. Um, then they're gonna ask you, are you already in business or are you planning on being in business? Believe it or not, you can register a couple years before you start doing work. Uh, the rule of thumb is three and a half years before you get started. Um, and so I could actually have an idea and be like, oh, I wanna start this in the future, but I wanna see if the trademark's available, I wanna pre-register it, and then I'm gonna get going. Um, and so this is obviously important because of one most important thing, your brand essentially becomes your reputation which is why whenever a company goes through a rebranding, whether it's intentional, like they just want a fresh start, or whether it's unintentional, like I've had companies that get started and they get a cease and desist letter and somebody tells them, listen, sorry, I already have that trademark. This happened to a couple clients of mine. The people were like, hey, I'm in Virginia. I already have that trademark. You can't do that business down in Florida. Now, what we did is we tried to negotiate a coexistence agreement. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. In the uh, case I'm thinking of, they said, no, we're sorry, uh, we're not interested. So guys, trademarks, it's one of my favorite areas, um, of course.